Hey everybody, welcome back to NeuroSciQ, the best place on YouTube to increase your neuroscience IQ. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about brain-based learning. I thought this topic would be fitting for today's video because as the pandemic continues, parents are deciding whether or not they want to send their children back to school or implement homeschooling for the year instead. So brain-based learning is a type of learning that adheres to neuroscience to optimize education. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about what brain-based learning is, its benefits, and how you can implement it if you decide to homeschool your children, or perhaps if you're continuing education on your own and you're older, it's another thing you can implement in your daily habits to help you learn every day. So sit tight, stay tuned, let's roll the intro. So before we get started, let's talk about brain-based learning. Brain-based learning was highly developed by two researchers, Kane and Kane. And basically, what they suggest is that traditional learning can impede the brain's natural processes. So we innately are designed to learn from the environment. But trying to put somebody in a system that teaches them could be impeding with the natural process of learning. So what is brain-based learning? Rudolf Steiner and the Waldorf system of learning say that learning should be individualized for all children. Now, this is something that's impossible in the modern day education system as teachers have to deal with 30 students at a time. So. Organic education or homeschooling can help nurture what is already within the child. And brain-based learning focuses on something called constructivism. Constructivism is guiding the learner via actual experiences. So rather than using the kind of factory-focused industrial system learning that was implemented during the Industrial Revolution, students should be taught through experience. Now, what I just said about the Industrial Revolution, if you think of the modern day education system with things being graded, with there being an input and an output, the student is being taught, then they output on their test, and then the test is graded. It's very much like a factory where there's a product, so you put something into the machine, you get something out of the machine, and then they grade the product at the end. We can't be treating us as machines when we all are different. We all have individual skills that should be heightened. So we're in this era of education where experts are creating knowledge, teachers teach, and then students are graded. Now, let's talk about what you can do with homeschooling that can help get past this. I'm gonna talk about ways that learning could be made better based on neuroscience. So first of all, we're going to talk about something called sensory pathway preference. Now, a lot of schools do implement this, and it's something I remember doing on the first day of school for years and years. The teachers would give us a test that would ask us some questions, and then we'd rank ourselves. And based on the ranking, we would be defined as a kinesthetic learner, a visual learner, or an auditory learner. Now, it's suggested that we have some sort of sensory pathway preference, and so for certain people, information is encoded more easily when it's delivered in different forms. For instance, if you find you're a kinesthetic learner, things like movement, flashcards, and manipulating objects while you work would help you learn. Visual learners are said to like to hear the information, follow instructions, be given homework so they can look it over on their own, and enjoy learning from symbols, pictures, and illustrations. Whereas auditory learners learn more from lectures, from hearing, reading notes, studying out loud, and discussing what they learned with others. In reality, we're multi-sensory beings, and if all three modes of sensation are stimulated while learning, that can help us create more connections in the brain. So rather than limiting a student to, oh, you're a kinesthetic learner, you're a visual learner, you're an auditory learner, it's better to encourage all these modes to help them learn. This is something that's hard to do in school, 
the way school is structured is you go into class, you sit down, your teacher teaches you at the front of the classroom. There's not a lot of kinesthetic learning. They try to implement all three modes, but at the end of the day, it's not a super enriching environment when you go sit down at your desk and have this information being delivered to you. Something that homeschoolers can do is since you're only dealing with one child and not a classroom of 30 kids, is tailor the learning to that child in specific and figure out what ways work for them to learn. Now there's also a cognitive pathway preference. So people tend to either like to see things sequentially or globally. Now sequential learners will connect points with steps. So for people who like to learn sequentially, it's good to encourage them to do things one at a time, organize things in a stepwise manner, and keep them in a formal environment. Globally minded individuals like to see the big picture first and then focus on the details. So things like giving them frequent breaks and having more of an informal environment could help them. But this type of learning is also influenced by how they're taught. So students that go through the school system will learn to be more sequential learners, whereas students who are homeschooled may be more big pick, may have where homeschool, but homeschooled kids might have more of a big picture mentality and think more globally. Now we have to keep in mind there are different stages we go through in life. Babies like to interact with the environment more and that's how they learn, by picking things up, looking at them. And then younger kids learn through experimentation. Teenagers are actually at a point in life where there's a lot of pruning going on in their brains. We have this thing called the Hebbian Law, which is use it or lose it. So if you're using pathways in the brain, they will become stronger, but if you don't use them, then you will lose those pathways. So during the teenage years, that's when pruning is happening, and teens will lose the pathways that they no longer use. So if they're in an environment that's not stimulating the pathways that they need, then they're going to lose those pathways. Another important thing is mindset. So children that were encouraged and told, oh my gosh, you're doing such a good job, great work, that's amazing, you're a great artist, actually perform worse than children who are encouraged by the teacher saying, wow, you must have worked so hard. By telling a child that they must have worked hard on that, they're encouraging hard work, whereas if you tell a kid good job, they think it's more of an innate characteristic and they don't have to develop it further. But telling them great work, you did such hard work to achieve this goal, will encourage hard work in the future. Now, children who are homeschooled tend to be less stressed, and stress is something that can impede the functions of the brain. So basically when we have information come in, it goes through the thalamus, which is an area that decides what to do with information. It's like a filter. So if you're being taught in the classroom, the information goes through the thalamus and then it is split to the cortex and the amygdala. The amygdala acts on giving the input some sort of emotional meaning and the cortex processes the information and figures out what to do with it. So if you are in a fearful or stressful situation, the amygdala is alarmed. And what will happen is that everything that comes in is so emotionally tinted that emotion takes over and you end up bypassing the sophisticated connections that occur throughout the rest of the brain. So things like helplessness and fatigue that are seen in so many children that go to school would actually impede their learning. Now, fear is induced in the classroom. It's not that they're afraid for their life, but when we have pre-specified correctness to answers and there's a set right and wrong and external control over rewards rather than allowing the children to feel internal meaning and progress, they just get a grade, and if they did well, that's good. If they did poorly, that's bad. So we have this restrictiveness about the school that causes stress, and this stress in the children can overreact the amygdala, which can impede the prefrontal cortex and reduce processing for learning. 
So how can we implement constructivism? Constructivism, we said, is learning through authentic experience and decision making. So this is multi-sensory. When you put somebody into a situation and they learn from that situation, all their senses are being activated. If you give somebody a multiple choice quiz, well, this isn't very sensory stimulating and there's no active decision making. It's just, is this right or wrong? They're not going through the process of figuring out what is happening and making their own decisions. So. Homeschooling can actually allow people to focus on actor-centered decision-making. What is this? This is when you have a problem, the student is placed in the problem, and they have to make choices to figure it out. So learning, rather than being force-fed in homeschooling, can be more exploratory, and this is actually way more meaningful. The reason why exploration is more meaningful than being force-fed information is because you're activating more parts of the brain, you are tying it into your own experience. When you make a memory, that memory is being encoded and everything about the moment is stimulating the, your brain. So, allowing the decision-making and the learning to be learner-centered we activate multiple domains and the child actually learns, learns self-efficiency and self-regulation, important skills that can be factored into the future. Even now, if you are trying to learn things, maybe you're done school, maybe you graduated and you want to be an active learner throughout your life, it's important to exercise self-efficiency and self-regulation. What happens too often with the schooling system is we're regulated by our teachers. Our teachers are focused on getting our papers in, giving us marks back, but if you have to do that on your own now and there's no system, people can feel lost, they can feel stressed, they can feel overwhelmed by the fact that there's no guidelines because they've never had to set those for themselves. So homeschooling can help with that because from a young age the student is learning on their own. and. Learning from your own experiences is way more meaningful because you can tie things to existing experiences in your brain as well. That's a mnemonic for learning. When you want to deeply encode something that you read, if you connect it to your own personal experience, we already have this existing synaptic network in our brain and if you tie something to that synaptic network, you have this strong network already, adding something to it is going to be much easier than just creating a whole new network for something you learned. So that is something that is hard to encourage in school. Students have to learn to do this on their own, and it's something that can be more common in homeschooled children. Encouraging students to make connections in real life will actually encourage connections to form within their brain. So if you decide to homeschool your child, you're going to want to discover their purpose and their passion and feed that and use a sort of scaffolding approach. That's the best way. So guide them through their learning and help them to learn through experiences so that they can develop synapses and connections in their brain. Another thing is homeschooling can be less stressful for the student. They're at home, they don't have to wake up early and catch the bus and get to school, they're not graded and compared to other peers. Not that competition is a bad thing, but when we reduce stress in our daily life and reduce the glucocorticoids, this can be beneficial to their brain. Stress has been shown to impair memory in maze trials for rats and what they've seen in animal studies and in the brains is that there's shrinkage of the cells in the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is involved with decision making, it's involved with memory, emotion, and self-regulation. Also with stress we see the growth of dendrites in the amygdala so dendrites are parts of the neurons that connect to other neurons. So if we have more connections forming in the amygdala, that's not the most beneficial thing 
Uh, but also the hippocampus is targeted and the hippocampus is important for memory and what we see in stressed individuals is that again we have shrinkage of cells in the hippocampus, less dendrites, so less connections being made. This is inhibiting the long-term potentiation which we've talked about in lots of other videos. Long-term potentiation basically allows synapses to form and connections to form within the brain to solidify learning. With stress, this is inhibited. Having a student in a less stressful environment could benefit them. So, basically, brain-based learning is a type of learning that adheres to how the brain functions, and we've learned that the brain benefits from receiving multi-sensory information. Being stimulated from all angles can help create more connections, and also, Learning from your own experience is much more meaningful because this will tie in information to existing networks in your brain. So homeschooling can provide this brain-based learning in a much more meaningful way than the education system can. Because when it's one child or just your family that you're focusing on, you don't have 30 kids to tailor education to. So allowing students to learn at home from their own experiences can actually help them develop learning skills for the rest of their life and help form more meaningful synaptic connections in the brain. Remember the Hebbian Law where you use it or lose it? This is something that happens when you test children. If you've ever written a test in your life, you might write the test do well on it and then come out of the test not even remembering a single thing when you went in. A couple of weeks later it's all gone because you learned it, you used it for that time being, but you didn't use it over and over again to keep it actually encoded in your brain and then you just lose it. So how meaningful of a learning experience is that? That's all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any future video ideas that you'd like us to discuss, feel free to also leave those down below. Let us know what you think about this video in the comments, and remember, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us again.